Hello there my RPG lovers and welcome to another video. It's been a great month for Kingdoms of Amalur fans. This 10 year old action RPG from 2012 just received a new expansion called Fatesworn. If you missed my review for Fatesworn you can check it out by clicking on the card up above. Playing this new DLC for such an old and kinda underrated RPG just made me hungry for more. I tried really hard to think of some recently released action RPGs which could be compared with Kingdoms of Amalur in one way or another. And I think that everyone would agree that the greatest strength of this game was definitely its combat system. The fast paced action combat felt really satisfying and refreshing in this genre of games. Well, there is one specific game that I briefly covered on the channel in my upcoming RPGs video which could possibly remind you of Kingdoms of Amalur for a couple of reasons. But before we start talking more in depth about this game, a quick word from today's sponsor. Friends and Dragons is a free to play strategy based mobile RPG available on Android and iOS devices. You get to summon and collect over 150 epic heroes in this puzzle dungeon crawler game. In order to make your heroes more powerful, you get to equip different items and upgrade their skills. Friends and Dragons features over 500 handcrafted puzzles and adventures, as well as epic weekly events and competitive challenges. You can also play it in co-op with your friends and go through these dungeons together for a chance to win double rewards. And speaking of the co-op mode, Friends and Dragons has guilds that you can join, which makes it a lot easier to play with other people online. Friends and Dragons can be a really chill game, but if you're a really competitive player, you can look forward to climbing on the leaderboards. So if you enjoy the elements of hero collection, strategy and puzzle gameplay, you should definitely try out this game. Download Friends and Dragons by scanning the QR code you see on the screen or by clicking the link in the description and get a special starting pack. A rare mythic summoning scroll for a guaranteed 4 star hero, a premium summoning scroll, 600 gems, talent tokens, gold and XP to level up your heroes and the town. Big thanks to Friends and Dragons for sponsoring this video. Strayblade is one of the games that I featured in my upcoming RPGs video back in the late November. Back then we only had a short story trailer along with some short gameplay clips. In the meantime, Point Blank Games, the developer of Strayblade, published a brand new gameplay video, so now we have a lot more to talk about. Strayblade is an upcoming action RPG which seems to be highly focused on delivering a satisfying combat system. And this is where my initial comparisons with Kingdoms of Amalur comes into play. I was a bit skeptical when I first read the description for the gameplay in Strayblade or specifically the info about the combat system. The hyper responsive combat system allows quick reactions and precise attacks to fully control the flow of the battle. It merges strategic anticipation of enemy attacks with split second blade to blade reactions. The high noon of melee weapon combat. That's one part of the description on the game's Steam page. But after seeing this new trailer and longer combat videos, I'm willing to believe that this game will have a pretty good combat system. We can't say anything for sure of course until the game comes out, but the new trailer makes the game look pretty damn good in general. I could be reaching a bit with these Kingdoms of Amalur comparisons, but just by looking at some of these clips I hope you see what I mean. This jumping attack and the overall smoothness of animations in combat is the main thing which I could point my finger at when it comes to those Kingdoms of Amalur comparisons. If you've been following my channel for a while, you might remember this particular video. I described the combat in Kingdoms of Amalur as one of the smoothest action combat systems in open world RPGs. While Strayblade is not an open world RPG, at least it doesn't seem so, the combat looks pretty damn smooth. Now let's get a bit more technical here. The guy in the new Strayblade trailer mentioned some interesting things about the combats. It seems like the playstyle in this game will mostly depend on your choice of weapons. He mentioned that the game has around 30 different weapons and that each of them offers unique playstyles. I think this implies that all of these weapons have unique movesets in combat. If that's actually true, it would be really impressive. However, I think it's much more realistic to have similar movesets for weapons of the same type, along with some special weapon abilities. Now here's another really interesting part about the combat related to weapons. You'll be able to combine two different weapons and create a unique playstyle for your character. Judging by these clips, it seems like switching between your two equipped weapons will be really seamless, with just a press of a button, possibly. And if you played Kingdoms of Amalur, you know this is exactly how that game used to work as well. You got to equip a primary and a secondary weapon that you could switch between in combat by a press of a button. Actually, you had two different buttons for primary and a secondary weapon, but switching between them in combat was really seamless. 
Not to mention that this made it possible to create some interesting and unique playstyles. So I really hope you see where I'm coming from with these comparisons. In a couple of different frames from the old and the new trailer as well, we could see how the itemization in the game will work. It seems like every item is categorized by its rarity, which is indicated by a different color. That's nothing new, a bunch of RPGs have a similar idea when it comes to itemization and yeah, Kingdoms of Amalur is one of them. When it comes to other items that you'll be able to equip on your character, there are three different armor slots and a quick slot bar. And judging by this limited info about the itemization, it seems like there is a decent amount of different armors to collect. Every trailer for Stray Blade so far had a lot of finishing moves, and I like each and every one of them. It's a no-brainer to include a feature like this in a game that's focusing a lot on its combat system. And I'm probably starting to sound like a broken record, but this is the point of the video, kinda. Kingdoms of Amalur had great finishing moves with all weapon types, so yeah. Stray Blade has a character progression system, but we only have some basic info about it. If I understood this correctly, you will gain experience in a classical RPG manner, which allows you to unlock special attacks with different weapons and possibly a lot of passive abilities as well. It's been confirmed that we have a talent tree, but we don't know anything about this aspect of the game yet. One thing is for sure though, you gain experience and levels, which allows you to progress your character. And of course, the combat in Stray Blade has some of the features that you would expect to find in a modern action RPG, such as parry and dodge mechanics. Like I said before, the action combat in Stray Blade looks really damn smooth, and that goes for these specific mechanics as well. Even though Stray Blade doesn't seem to have an open world, the exploration is supposed to be another major focusing point in the game. They will try to make these maps feel alive by including some kind of a dynamic feature which takes in consideration your decisions. So you will find different enemies to fight when you revisit the place that you already explored and if you die, the time keeps moving forward, whatever that means. It could be just some kind of a procedural generation system, but we have to wait and see. I still didn't mention Boji, your companion in the game. Wait, Boji? This little dude also has a talent tree which is related to crafting. He looks really similar to mutants in Biomutant, by the way. I just hope that's the only similarity with Biomutant because that game was a big disappointment. Anyway, if you didn't notice already, the artistic style of this game could also be compared to that of Kingdoms of Amalur. That's mostly because of the cartoony nature of the game, but if I would have to be completely objective, I think that Stray Blade looks pretty similar to Dauntless. Yeah, Dauntless, a Monster Hunter type game that came out in 2019. Remember that game? Yeah, I didn't think so. Even some of the creatures in Stray Blade look really similar to monsters in Dauntless. And the last but not least, we have the story of Stray Blades. Embark on an unforgettable journey and discover the story of Arcria and its ancient legacy. Discover the whole history that turned the peaceful valley into the place of war and death. Use this knowledge to destroy the relics of the past and restore peace in the war-torn valley. Besides that short description of the story, we also know that you have to master the powers of the three Arcrean metals, whatever that means. We could hear that in the first Dev Diary trailer. Like we said before, combat and exploration are the two key elements of the game, so I don't expect to experience some amazing storytelling. Boji seems like an interesting character though. Anyway, that would be pretty much everything we know about the game so far. I tried my best to collect every little piece of info, but it's very limited. I'll keep my eye on every future update and I'll definitely cover the game when it comes out, so stick around if you want to see that. We still don't have the exact release date, we only know it's coming out in 2022 for PC, Xbox and PS5. Anyway, tell me your opinion about Stray Blade in the comments below. Don't forget to subscribe for more RPG content. If you want to support the channel in the long run, consider becoming a Patreon or a YouTube member. You can get your name on the end credits as well as some other perks like early access to videos, Discord roles, my plans for future content, etc. etc. That will be all and I'll see you in the next one.